information. So welcome. I'm busy having a chat with uh, Zoe from the Art Rental and Sales operated by the Vancouver Art Gallery. Um, it's fantastic to have Zoe with us. Uh, Zoe is somebody I've been working Well, I've been in the Art Rental and Sales for quite a long, how long have we been working together now? That's a good question. I don't yeah. even know how many years you've been in the program. It's, yeah. I mean, is it more than 10 years? I would say we're probably coming up to about 10 years because the first, the, I should have checked before we had a conversation, but I, off the top of my head, I'm thinking 2012. That sounds, prob that sounds probably right. 12 or 13. Yeah. And, with, you know, we've had this conversation numerous times where I'm completely loyal. Yes, loyal to the art rental and sales, but you, you've been some of my greatest advocates. Uh, as everybody knows, I moved to Vancouver in 2008. Uh, and started basically from scratch, had no one in my social network or anyone to talk to. So I started off at Granville Island. Um, and then when I got involved with the art rental and sales operated by the Vancouver Art Gallery, you were my greatest advocates and have been huge supporters and have really helped me develop over the course of the year. So um, just wanted to have a little chat about what the program is. because I think a lot of people don't understand what the program is. And uh, so if you can just give us a little insight into this mystery. Sounds good. And thanks so much for having me. Um, so I guess I'll start with just sort of a high level about what the program is, you know, so the art rental and sales program is a not for profit program. It's operated by the Vancouver Art Gallery. Um, and the mandate of the program is to support emerging artists throughout British Columbia. So essentially, you know, we have our own space um, within the Vancouver Art Gallery building, which is the art rental and sales showroom, um, where we have original works by BC based artists available for rent or for purchase. We work directly with the artists um, to, you know, to rent and sell the works to our client and the majority of what we bring in goes to the artist and the remainder comes back into the gallery to help fund educational programming, um, exhibitions. So really it's about sort of that full cycle of supporting the artists um, sort of in early mid stages of their career. Um, and in turn, the artists are also helped giving back um, by, you know, supporting the gallery as a, a community um, arts organization. Um, so that's sort of the, the high level of, um, of the way the program works. Fabulous. Yeah, that's what I've been the, the one of the exciting things, especially when I moved to Vancouver was very much being an emerging artist and you do provide a lot a, a big platform for emerging artists in connecting them with collectors. The, the thing I think and people often ask me, uh, because people that I speak to that are first time collectors of artwork, they often are very insecure, first of all, about their choices, also about their tastes as to whether their tastes are right or wrong, which is always an interesting question in and of itself. Um, but what would, what would a, a first time collector expect when they're coming in to chat to you? Because coming into the Vancouver Art Gallery is a self intimidating if you're thinking about collecting work. Um, so how would they actually find you first of all, and what can they expect when they're coming into you? Sure. So we are, first of all, we are located on the first floor of the Vancouver Art Gallery. Um, basically, you just need to go to reception and let them know you're interested in coming into art rental and sales and they'll buzz you through um, to our showroom. So just come to reception, they'll point you in the right direction. Um, and I think really what we're all about is making art accessible. So that's both from a uh, let's say a price perspective. So because we have work available for rent or for purchase, that the rental factor makes it more accessible where sometimes purchasing, uh, either people are new to collecting and they're intimidated by making a large purchase or perhaps they don't have the money to spend on a piece of, you know, to purchase a piece of art, but they still do want something, you know, like an original piece of artwork on the wall. So the rental aspect, you know, is something that makes it really accessible. And I think our approach is also just not to be intimidating. We are a place where anybody can come, whether you're, uh, you know, you've never bought a piece of art before, uh, you're new to collecting, to a really experienced collector that's just interested in seeing kind of what a wide swath of emerging artists are doing around the province. Uh, we're sort of a welcoming space um, that anyone can come. And um, I think it's important, you know, most commercial galleries, uh, cater to a particular kind of niche, like a certain kind of work or a certain kind of artists that they represent. Um, whereas our goal is really to represent the spectrum of artists working across the province. So we have traditional Canadian landscape painting, we have contemporary photography, we have abstract work, we have you know, cityscapes, uh, more impressionistic work, collage based work, um, a little bit of sculpture. So it's really somewhere that's really welcoming where if you just aren't sure what you like, uh, you know, it's a place to come in and explore to find 
what kind of art you're drawn to. Um, and often we have, um, you know, couples or people that live together that aren't, you know, maybe have different tastes, um, which sometimes is a challenge. Um, so again, the, the sort of rental aspect makes it a little bit, e you know, easier where you can come in and sort of look around together. And then there's, it's not that long commitment. It's let's rent something, bring it home, see how we feel about it. And if you rent something and then decide to purchase, we credit up to three months of rent of paid rental fees towards the purchase. So again, same thing for collectors. It's, you know, a place to come and try, you know, try something out, live with it for a little while, um, you know, before you purchase. And there's no pressure to purchase whatsoever. You can rent long term as well. Travis, and do you, just at the top of my head, I was thinking, do you have any nice stories that you can share about somebody who's come in and felt a little awkward coming into your space and then walked away with the success story? Is there anything that comes to mind? I mean, not one in particular, but it, it happens often where people sometimes do, where they'll come in and say, oh, hi, um, I went to, I've gone to like a different, I went to a different gallery and sort of I walked in, it was this big empty space, no one said hi to me, I kind of, you know, felt a little out of place and didn't really know what to do basically I kind of looked around and left and nobody even really talked to me so I asked a friend and they suggested coming here it's like those kinds of experiences where it's just the intimidation factor or feeling like if I'm not if they're not spending huge sums of money then they're not buying real art you know which is which is not the case I mean there's just so many different kinds of artists at different places in their career um, that there's really something for everyone, it's, it's about what, you know, the, the adage of sort of buy what you love, I think is always the most true. Um, but yeah, we, we get, we do get that a lot of people who just say, you know, they felt kind of, in, they felt intimidated in other situations. Um, so it's nice for, you know, for it to be a space that's, that feels welcoming for people. And then the interesting thing is, you know, based on the conversation that we're having now, one could almost believe that you're, you're specifically targeted towards first time uh, collectors, people who are insecure, but then uh, from experience also know that you have a lot of very established collectors who know exactly what they're collecting, why they're collecting, they have a, a vision for their their collection and they also come to you, isn't that true? That is true and you know that's a really good point. Um, one thing that I didn't mention is about how artists come into our program. So mm. we actually hold a call for submissions once a year when artists around BC can apply to the program. Um, we then have a third party panel of jurors, usually made up of uh, curators from other uh, non-commercial um, institute, you know, non-commercial galleries, uh, you know, philanthropists from within the arts community, sometimes designers. Um, but we have this third party panel that selects a, a handful of artists to join the program each year. And just to give you an idea, we had over 200 artists apply last year and wow. five were selected to join the program. Wow. So yeah. it is a, a selected, a select group of artists that we have in the program. And it sort of goes through that, um, I don't want to say qualification process, but there is, there is a selection process for artists coming into the program where the more experienced collectors also come to us because they know there's sort of that threshold that, um, that the, you know, the art, the, any of the work we carry would have gone through that process. And so you're sort of starting at um, that sort of level where you know, you know, it's sort of gone through that, that jury process. Um, and, you know, people come to us sometimes and say, how do I know, uh, I want to buy something for an investment, you know, and that's, that's really hard. I mean, who's to say what career any artist is going to have or how much their, their work is going to be worth in the future. Um, but again, for collectors who they're, they want to buy what they love, but they're also looking perhaps for that other possibility of investment down the road. Um, again, because of that sort of qualification process we have, uh, we do get those more experienced collectors that come looking for those emerging artists early in their, or, you know, mid, mid kind of career. Yeah. And I think that's one of the, the things that makes you such a powerful program and also such a, a, a forceful change is potentially not the word I'm looking for but but it ties back into the fact that not only are you impacting collectors and artists but the fact that the entire program is run to support what is happening in the Vancouver Art Gallery as well so it's just it's this amazing microcosm that's been developed uh, around the art rental and sales I think a lot of people don't fully comprehend 
how it's it's actually a living organism that has far-reaching consequences and benefits. Well, and, and to your point, I mean, one sort of interesting um, note is that on occasion, uh, we will hear for, from one of the curators internally within the Vancouver Art Gallery where they'll be installing an, a, a, an exhibition within the gallery and they'll be hanging the work and they'll find a label on the back of one of the pieces from the 1950s or the 1960s with a label on the back that says, you know, our rental and sales program at, at that time, actually, the, the program was started in 1952. At that time, it was called the picture loan program. Um, but the pieces will come through that will be, you know, they're installing for exhibitions and they'll find one of our old labels on the back. So it is this sort of amazing cycle that we have. This program has been supporting artists since you know since the 1950s and many of those artists have gone on to have these amazing careers where you know now they are being shown in in uh institutions around the world as part of you know traveling exhibitions or whatever you know exhibitions are being mounted here within the gallery so it, it's it's that cycle that you're talking about yeah, um, yeah. which is really exciting yeah it's very powerful um, and also, I think it's an important thing to note as well, because we've spoken a lot about collectors, uh, no matter where they are in their collecting process, but also uh, a lot of the work that you do do is with businesses. So it's not something where uh, you're exclusively looking for the private person. You do do a lot of work with businesses as well. Um, and also the movie industry, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we have individual clients that we've talked about, collectors. We have a lot of corporate clients, so offices that are looking to rent artwork for their space. A, an artwork rental is a uh, deductible, you know, tax deductible business expense. So a lot of companies prefer, you know, to rent where they'll come select a number of pieces for their offices and, and they'll come, you know, some clients come every six months or once a year to select different works and kind of rotate um, mm -hmm. artwork through their space. So that's, that's some, you know, something really uh, popular that we do. We do a lot of work with the film industry. Um, we work with staging companies. So staging homes, you know, for sale or uh, developers that have show suites um, for new properties they're, they're building um, or developing. So there is, a, you know, there, there are a lot of different reasons why one would rent um, artwork, like a lot of those cases, or uh, often those, corporate clients do end up purchasing as well to start building a corporate collection. Mm, that's a very exciting angle. I hadn't thought about it actually. Yeah. yeah. And then you do also have, I know you've got a featured program, a featured artist program at the moment. You've got uh, Jim Park, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Jim Park is our featured artist. So we do four featured artists a year, you know, uh, Leanne, cause you've obviously, you know, been into our space, but we have our sort of main walls of our showroom space where we, uh, you know, feature four, we have four artists a year. Um, that kind of have their, their work featured on the main walls. And then in non-COVID times, we usually also have a, an artist talk uh, where many people sit very close together <laughs> <laughs> listening to someone speak. I know it's shocking uh, <laughs> to even think about that happening. Um, so we haven't been doing that lately, but uh, hopefully, you know, at some point when we get back to normal. Um, yeah. <laughs> We'll be able to start doing that again. Yeah, yeah. which which in itself I know is an exciting exciting thing for collectors to come and meet the artist, because I think there's nothing uh, more special than even for me who is an artist. I, I love actually meeting other artists and and learning about their process. But having that unedited uh, kind of ramble, listening to them talk about their process, so the that is a perfect opportunity for people to actually come in and chat to the artist. Exactly. And I do think hearing from the artists about their work, it just creates such a different perspective when you're looking at the work, mm -hmm. you know, understanding more about the, the physical process into the, uh, of the creation of the work, but also the, the mental, the thought process. Um, and even, you know, often it's really interesting looking at, you know, sometimes artists, when they do their talk, they'll go back, you know, looking to the beginning of their career as an artist, or maybe if they were in art school, and even looking at their work, sort of, you can see these really interesting, um, sort of something thematically or um, aesthetically that's been in their work since the beginning. The work has changed through the years, uh, but when you go back and look at it in that way, sort of together, you can kind of really see just an interesting evolution for most artists of, where their work was, where it is. And it, it is, it's always evolving. I mean, I'm sure you can see that in, in your work, looking at the work that you were doing um, in South Africa before you came to Canada, the work you're doing here and sort of how aspects of it that have stayed the same and, you know, maybe have been consistent and things that, they, about, that have changed about your work. Um, so it's I always fascinating. 
it is and, and you know, one of the great things about uh, being an artist meeting people who are interested in the artworks and actually having that interaction in the old days uh, is the fact that it, it sheds so much light on the artist process I always like it it's, it's a it's again that lovely circle where it's enjoyable for the, the collector or the person interested in the artist to come and have a chat to the artist but it's so beneficial for the artist to have that conversation because it sheds light on that entire process which sometimes you get lost in the process itself uh, and then having that conversation gets you to the, uh, the upper levels of it and it gives you a great perspective on what you're doing and helps you propel yourself forward. I, yeah. I think it also comes back to that question of um, our program and accessibility of the work is, you know, even sometimes thinking about, again, sort of in a gallery exhibition setting, uh, like the Vancouver Art Gallery exhibitions or, you know, other institutions around the world where often it's work by artists who are no longer living. There's, you know, all the didactics and all the written information. And it sometimes can be very heady and very, uh, you know, esoteric and kind of intimidating. But again, there's something, you know, about the work that we carry because we're working with living artists, you know, having the opportunity to come in and hear the artist talk, um, you know, or we work directly with the artists. So talking to us where we can kind of share with our clients those stories that we know from working with the artists um, and hearing about the process and, and hearing what goes into the work. Um, I think even that helps make it more accessible in a way that sometimes gets lost in a more academic, um, an academic setting. And so, yeah, again, for, for collectors or for, you know, anyone interested in learning about, you know, what are living, working artists in our community? What, what kind of things are they making? What are they doing? Um, it just makes, it's, it's a really accessible way to, to learn more about those, those artists and their work. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Zoe. That's been, been, been fabulous. I think it, it helps, uh, it sheds a lot of light on all my thoughts that I have about the art rental and sales. And it uh, brings across, I think, the, the power of the, the program because it's, it's more than just a showroom in the uh, art gallery. It's, it's a very powerful living dynamic process. And thanks to your team because you've got a fabulous team that works with you. Thanks so much. We're very lucky to have a great team and to have the support of the gallery and to have, so we have 120 artists that we work with. Wow. Um, currently, if you can believe it. And we're just, we're so lucky to have so many wonderful artists in this city and in this province yeah. um, that we work with. And it's, it's our pleasure. And we'll look forward to, yeah, welcoming anyone in that, yeah. I mean, in, again, in a socially distanced, <laughs> uh, appropriate, masked appropriate way right now. Um, but yeah, we'd love to have yeah. anyone in that, that uh, just people can reach out and book an appointment with us. Fabulous. And that's what I'll do uh, on the bottom of the screen over here. You'll see that I've actually got your website address. So although the screen's not interactive, if you just head over to the artrentalandsales.com, which is an amazing <laughs> web address. So you can just have a look at the web address at the bottom of the screen over here and head over to there. And uh, the, with COVID, the situation is constantly changing. So I would suggest to everybody just to check the homepage. You've got that very updated in terms of what your current response is uh, and what the current process is. And the very final little thing I'd like to ask you, because I often get asked this question, so I'm now asking everybody else's question. How does someone become you? Me? Yeah. How does someone become me? Wow, <laughs> where's, where's, my, uh, where's my couch, my therapy? Uh, that's a big question. Um, I mean, if you want to know specifically my, I mean, the, the very, um, the Coles Notes version is uh, I went to the University of Victoria. I did a bachelor's degree in art. I grew up in Vancouver. First of all, I grew up in Vancouver, went to UVic to do a bachelor's degree in art history. Um, I then went to the Sotheby's Institute of Art in London. I did a master's in fine and decorative arts uh, there and um, then found my way back to Vancouver because this is where my family is. And, you know, did I mean how much time do we have did it did a few different things uh you know in in the in the um art scene around Vancouver and with different art related businesses and um eventually found my way here to the Vancouver Art Gallery and just have felt I've been here for five years uh working with the art rental and sales program and um just feel very fortunate I'm very lucky to work with such a wonderful program 
Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I figure uh, that was exactly how I felt the first time somebody asked me that. So now I just throw that ball back at other people and pass it around. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right. So thank you very much, Zoe. And uh, thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in and having a, a listen to this conversation. I'll probably be replaying it a couple of times. I'll post it onto the feed. Uh, so for anybody that's missed it this first time around, you can send them over this way to have a look. And just as a reminder, at the bottom over here, you'll see the Art Rental and Sales website. So just click onto that. Uh, they've got an amazing up-to-date catalog as well as their current status in response to the pandemic. So thank you thank very you. much. Last note, before yes. you get rid of me, last note, I have to mention, I'm sitting in front of a yes. beautiful painting by Lisa Okovitz. I just want to mention, I would be remiss that's if it. I didn't point that out. So Lisa Okovitz um, from the Art Rental and Sales program, we have her work as well. Perfect. And then just, you'll see up over here, I've popped her website so you can go over and have a look at her website. Thank you very much, Zoe. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Leanne. Take Thank care. You. Bye. Bye.